Sword Online Fractured Daydream Open Beta is arriving a week before the release of the game, so mark your calendars for September 20th to 23rd, a full-on weekend beta period, depending on your time zone. Let's talk about what you can expect from the open beta, including whether you can carry over your save data into the full game as well. Yes, they did talk about that and some other little tidbits. And of course, if you want to pre-order the physical edition, Amazon links will be in the description and the pinned comment. Or if you're interested, Gamer Talk merch featuring Sword Online the first day, Lens Squad and many others are on my Teespring page, do check them out. Now, officially, this one is called the Open Network Test. The closed beta was to collect feedback about the game mechanics and test the network infrastructure, not particularly going for a stress test, given the participant count was limited as well. This Open Network Test, effectively an open beta for players, seems like it'll be the stress test for the network infrastructure and Bandai Namco is calling upon all players to join in. They will of course collect other forms of feedback as well as usual, however do not expect these to be immediately addressed in a week for the release of the game, unless they're basic things like enemy health scaling or player attack potency etc, just to set expectations here. We're likely going to get a developer report after the network test as well once they digest the feedback. For the open beta, there will not be any codes or registrations. The beta client will be available on the online shop of your preferred device at some point before the beta begins for you to download. That's PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam. So stay tuned in the upcoming weeks to be able to download the beta or any potential changes in the rollout. Once again, similar to the closed beta, it is not a single uptime period from launch to end. We have two specific periods. In the description and the pinned comment, I'll put down links for time conversion for your convenience, but you can also write the time I'm mentioning here to Google with the time zone and it will automatically convert the time into your local time zone as well. Since I'm reading from Bandai Namco EU's website, the time provided is in CEST, Central European Summertime. Open Beta Period 1 starts on the 21st of September, Saturday, at 4 a.m. Central European Summer Time. Watch out, Americas, the converted time will thus be the 20th for you, so Friday night. The first period will last a full 24 hours and will conclude on the 22nd of September, 4 a.m. CEST. After this period, there will be a 4 hour server downtime and the game will remain inaccessible during this period, while they'll probably adjust some background parameters to improve or test things out. Similar changes were made to matchmaking and boss scaling, for example, during the closed beta. The devs of Fractured Daydream are quite agile on this front, as expected of a live service environment. Open beta period 2 will begin on the 22nd, so Sunday, at 8 a.m. CEST. Americas, depending on your specific time zone, whether you're in the West Coast or East Coast or Central, this may be the 21st or the 22nd for you, so pay attention during the time conversion, but I imagine it should not cause any confusion, it's literally 4 hours after the first period ends. Still, experience tells me to be specific, so many people missing out on things I would not expect them to miss, so there you go, disclaimer. This second beta period will last 21 hours instead, ending on the 23rd, so Monday at 5 a.m. CEST. The open beta will feature additional content compared to the closed beta. In the closed beta, the co-op quest, which is the map missions that culminate in a boss, featured Ilfang the Cobalt Lord and the raid quest, which was simply that, a raid boss in a single large arena, featured the Skull Reaper. The western news were not exactly explicit, but based on the Japanese information, the tutorial will once again appear and I expect this to remain completely unchanged. The co-op quest will be there and while the news post does not explicitly mention, they used the picture of the Ilfang fight at the end, so I imagine that is going to remain the same as well, unless they have another surprise co-op mission in store. Maybe at least some additional maps leading to the boss would be nice. To be frank, back in the closed beta I enjoyed the co-op quests a lot more than the raid battles, so I definitely would appreciate more content on this side. Boss raids on the other hand, not only will they have the Skull Reaper boss fight, but it will feature the Sword Golem from Elicization as well. But it appears the raid boss will not be directly selectable, they state that the available boss will be rotating based on the time of day. I'm also interested to see whether they will have additional difficulties for higher rewards. Based on the closed beta, we know there are these world tiers, but they were not accessible back there, nothing is stated for the open beta either. 
As for the playable characters, the original closed beta roster remains the same, Kirito as the fighter, Agil as the tank, Argo as the rogue, Shinon as the ranger, Oberon as the mage and Leafa as the support, with balancing adjustments made based on the closed beta of course. In addition to the closed beta however, the open beta will also add 3 characters to the roster. Asuna will be an additional character in the Fighter class, Len in the Rogue class and Fukajiro in the Ranger class. So you'll be able to test out more characters before the game launches on October 3, 4 and of course the 3 day early access based on your pre-order. I just wish they would have rounded up all classes to 2 each but hey, what do I know. The Western News stated, bring a friend or 20 as their tagline, especially on Twitter. I currently cannot be sure whether they just casually used it without realizing its connotations or whether it was on purpose, but just to set expectations. In the closed beta, it was not possible to create a team of 20 on your own. You were basically locked into your own party of 4 and for the rest of the lobby, you had to rely on matchmaking to fill it. But after the closed beta, one of the main feedbacks was that people wanted to have the option to invite more friends and fill the entire lobby of 20 on their own if they can. While I do hope they have heard the feedback, I would still err on the side of caution at the moment and assume their mention is just an unintentional meaning rather than a confirmation that you can form a party of 20 on your own until otherwise confirmed as a feature. As for whether your save will carry over from the beta or not, they have approached it a bit too specific if you ask me, there's a lot to cover, but we got a limited carryover feature from the beta to the full game this time around. Your equipment, so the weapons as well as accessories you have obtained will carry over to the full game. Based on my understanding, they have not specified further, this means they will transfer over at the rank you have them dropped as, with the stats they possess, with the perks they dropped with. So if you got a god roll, crit bonus, sniper for Shinon, yeah, you're, you're set for the game. However, this generosity makes me feel like that either means the open beta will actually be a lot stingier with its drops compared to the closed beta which had a lot of boosted drops or, you know, the special perk rates or that the full game is very confident in its longevity and rank progress that the devs feel comfortable enough to allow you to carry over your weapons and accessories, certain that you will easily outgrow them after release. I'm leaning closer to the latter, they'll likely give you an upper hand early release, but you'll quickly find yourself growing beyond the power level they give you and will be upgrading to newer drops instead. As for what is not going to carry over, Boy, that's basically everything else. Your game progress will not carry over, meaning the full game will not recognize your prior achievements and quest completions. Basically with the full game, you'll restart by playing the tutorial. Your character progress will not carry over, meaning the passive skills you unlock by reaching level 20 with individual characters, weapon and costume skins you unlock with the levels, they will all be gone and will need to be re-unlocked. Your player rank will reset just the same, which affects the level of weapon and accessory drops you will receive, meaning if you carried over your equipments from the beta, for a while, you'll start by receiving lower level items as drops until you level up your player rank again. Any skins, costumes or decorations you unlock by defeating bosses and the like, such as the Skull Reaper hat for example, will not carry over, you will need to unlock them again. Your settings, player card adjustments, friends list, block list etc will not carry over. And last, but the one I'm most curious about, your reinforcement materials and core will not carry over. They have not said anything about whether the equipment that's carried over will arrive with their enhancements or not. So my recommendation, given the vague situation here, before the beta test ends, just make sure you use up all your core and materials to enhance your equipment. If we are lucky, they will carry over with their enhancement status as well. And additionally, the save data will not carry over automatically when the game releases. So when the game releases, make sure you go into options, network, save data bonuses in the game first to obtain your beta items. I imagine the fatal bullet save bonus will also work this way. This obviously will not work 
if you play the beta on one platform but end up buying it on another so make sure you're on the same platform there is no cross save and you will not receive cross platform beta or fatal bullet save bonuses last but not least you will not need a ps plus or an xbox online membership to participate in the beta on those consoles however the switch version will require a switch online membership because of course it does <laughs> this one is most likely not on bandai namco here so feel free free to blame it on Nintendo as usual. I can't believe even their free-to-play games on their platform are mostly requiring online membership. Like, come on, man. I, I just started using my Switch properly again and I can't play that Tetris game that is free-for-all. But anyways, I digress. That is every single thing you need to know about the upcoming open network test for Sword Online Fractured Daydream. Make sure to leave a like if it answered all your questions. If it didn't, just ask away in the comments and I'll try to answer further if I have the info. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, stay cool.